Hey YouTube, Joe here. So, for the longest time you've been able to see what's on the brewery side, but not what's on the other side here. And I wonder why that's been. Could it have been that there was something in the works going on that you didn't know about, but that I did, and now it's time to show it off? You probably already know what it is. <laughs> the 14 gallon spike conical. Hotly anticipated. We're gonna do a review of it here, but before that, I've got 10 gallons of beer in there to keg up, so we're going to do that first. So because the conical has so many fittings that come with it, it's super easy. I've got a couple here in my cleaned and sanitized hands. We're going to pop it on this port here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do first? There it is. My sanitizer. I'm just going to rinse that out. I don't mind it dumping down there. These are, of course, already sanitized. I reuse my blow-off hose connection. So, with that said, there's that. I kind of tilt it off to the side just a little bit there. Now I'm going to pop this off the top here. Dry clamp it on. Super easy to use. So my first step, um, obviously I've already drained the base of the conical, the main tube there. This has been quite a long time ago, but we have to always drain the actual liquid out. The sample port, I've drained of course, I had to pull samples throughout the process, but I haven't drained this one out yet. So, just grab one of my buckets here. Maybe you can see this, let's see, can you? Yeah, you should be able to see that. So, very easy. Whoop, funk, there's funk. That's actually looking pretty clear there. So, pull the trigger, give it a go, you're done. So, there's that. I'm just gonna set this on the floor here. And now I've got my sanitized hose. You guys know what this is. Fits right on the nozzle here. Oops, if I can get it. I'm not a lefty, so this is a little awkward. <laughs> Trying to get it so you can see it. Keep it in the light there. There we go. And in shade number one here. Set that up. Now. There's that there. And away we go. You can see how nice and clear that is. It is the benefit of a conical. It's very similar to the fast ferment in that, you know, all the tube is collected. You can dump it off so you don't have to transfer it around. So this is 14 gallons, obviously. That's not my standard size of brewing. You guys have seen me brew my regular batches of beer. I do five gallon batches, but that's why I've been testing those standardized batches. Some of you sent me emails about that being like, why are you doing that, Joe? What are you up to there? So uh, that being said, well, I guess I had to come clean. Now you know. I've been actually one of the people that has been testing the Spike Brewing Conical through development. So I've had this thing for quite a while now. Um, and we've done a lot of changes. I shouldn't say we, they've done a lot of changes based on apparently our feedback. Um, there was a couple people that were doing the testing in addition with their own uh, you know, in-house folks. We are almost full on this keg here, so I'm gonna Stop rambling for just a second. Keep, you know, pay attention in there because it fills so fast and I don't even have it full throttle. I guess I could now that it's completely gone. Yep, yeah, there it goes. So fast. Half inch hose, so half inch. I'm going to knock up right there. And we'll pull that out there. Whoop. Got kind of a longer line than I need on here, but it just makes it easier for me. Then I can do that. I kill it in the next keg. Because 10 gallons, man. It's a lot of beer. Way it goes. We'll wait for that to do. Here, kind of splashing around there. It's because the flow is so fast. It's just under the lip of it now. There it goes. Just open that sucker up. Full tilt! So yeah, so I've been testing this for quite a while. Uh, a lot of revisions have been made to it. That's part of why they had such a long delay with this thing. They had ideas, they changed them a little bit here, a little bit there. In fact, I haven't even seen the new one. It may have already changed from the concept that uh, was behind this setup here. Um, 
Um, but uh, yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later here. So essentially what I'm going to do, I'm dumping the kegs out, or dumping the uh, uh, fermenter out here into the two kegs. I'm going to lube the top, we're going to seal them up, I'm going to throw one in the keezer because I also have to uh, keg up a cider I made. Um, super easy to make, I tell you. I love making them because they're so easy. Um, but got to get this done, got to get that done uh, tonight because, uh, yeah, I'm blowing out a beer here in the keg, so it's got to get it done, got to get it done at the time. Out of beer. So yeah, I'm just going to fill these up here, and then uh, once everything's done, we'll be back and we'll do a review. So cheers. I've got the beer kegged. Got to get it under gas and everything. You can still see the tops of them right there. So, But I figured now would be a good time to do our review. So cheers. This is a uh, wine from a commercial winery here in Iowa. It's a uh, pomegranate wine. It's way too sweet for my taste. We'll just put it that way. I do not get these super sweet wines. I, oh, And it's not even the booze factor. It's the sweet factor. I mean, the flavor is good. Just dial down the damn sugar. Come on, man. Ooh. Woo. Ain't gonna stop me, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you can hear it's summer. This cake is going crazy. So, yeah, the Spike Conical. Uh, this has been kind of a fun process. Ben reached out to me not too, too long after I finished building the electric system here and was asking me if I was interested in testing new stuff for them. And I was like, well, of course. Hell yeah, send it my way and I'll give it a go and we'll see what to do with it. And, uh, and uh, so, so far this thing's been great. Now, to start off, I was having a heck of a problem. Full disclosure here, I was having a heck of a problem with it. Um, <laughs> but they have since fixed it. Um, and I guess in full disclosure as well, they did send the conical to me free of charge. This is a non-biased review. Um, I don't have anything to do with Spike except that they'll send me stuff, I test it, and it's been interesting this one because I kind of worked through them with the development of it a little bit, just a little bit, um, and I've noticed some changes. The biggest one is with what I was having the biggest problem with, and that was the seal, the top seal. So this big ring right here is a giant clamp. The lid comes off in its entirety, it's like a very large dome, and it's got an in that kind of goes over, it bumps up, and then it goes straight down. And that straight down is supposed to line up with the flange that's on the actual conical itself. It's like a, just a lip that goes straight out uh, to the side. Now, what I was having the biggest problem with is that I could not get it to seal very well. I had to mess with it a lot. And um, in that process, we went through two gasket designs. One was a uh, C-shape design. Not sure, it's kind of hard to see here, but it's like you can open it, you know. It would go around the lip, compress it down with the big, uh, you know, the big clamp. Um, and then a completely circular design, which was to go in that, that hump I was telling you about around the whole perimeter of it. Um, this one was good in theory, except when I clamped it down, it literally squished it out, this very small gap in the front here. That also being said, they went through several clamp designs. This is one of them. This is the first one. This is their prototype, actually. Look, you can even see the welds. Check that out. <laughs> so you know they weren't messing around when they're like, Joe, this is a prototype. I'm like, yeah, okay, I see it. Um, worked well, you know, clamped down nice, you know, nice and easy. Kind of like a big drum clamp. Um, but right in that gap there, it pushed out this C gasket. Set that over there. It's kind of heavy. Um, the round gasket, I had absolutely no luck with at all. When I combined these two together in there, which was a bitch to get put on there, it worked really well. And I was like, Ben, I don't know, man. You might want to fix that gasket. <laughs> so now what's in there? Um, and I guess it is still together. Uh, I may you know, take it apart and then shoot a little bit to throw that in here so you can see it. But essentially, they've changed the design of the clamp here. The space is much, much smaller. I mean, we're talking, whereas this had, I mean, this is pretty much where it was about, you know, a good inch or so. Um, this other one has maybe half an inch, like maybe. It's very, very small. And the smaller uh, spaces throughout 
are about at a you know, quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch, right around there. The new gasket that goes inside this does fit up in that section that, you know, where the lid goes out and then it makes kind of a hump where the, the round gasket would go. The new gasket is a much larger black gasket that fits in there. It's almost shaped like a house. It's got a square bottom, it goes up, and then it goes to a point. So what I did is I fit that flat bottom right up in there so the point was down and then you clamp the whole thing down with this new clamp and I've had zero problems with that fit. That has been just rocking ever since. All the other connections are standard tri-clamp connections, so it, those pretty much guaranteed, super easy. Pop your silicone gasket on there, pop your fitting, put the clamp on, tighten it down, done. I mean, they're, they're absolutely foolproof. My only problem was with this top one here, and they fixed it. They fixed it 100%. So, that being said, I love this thing. I absolutely love it. I have done, oh God, um, at least four, four or five batches of beer in it since they started, um, both five gallon and 10 gallon. So a lot of times when you've seen me do the standardized batches here on YouTube, it's been, well, I can't show you my fermenter here. However, you know, it's been one of those, um, that's what it's been going into, that 10 gallons. Uh, it's 14 gallons, so 10 gallons right around here, plenty of room for that Croizen layer. Absolutely no problems with that. Um, the five gallon batches, interestingly enough, they designed this thing so that way you can move your thermo well around wherever you need it to be. So you can use it for five or 10 gallon batches, still use your thermo wells, all that stuff. The only thing you have to change is the very bottom dump um, and they recommend kind of changing that out so that way then you can dump out uh, the conical without wasting the space here. So it's, it's uh, I mean, you can still leave it exactly like it's set up, but instead lose your sample port, throw that up top here so that way you just kind of get top, top sample. I mean, five gallons is right around like here somewhere. Um, so I don't know how well that would work, but uh, for the 10 gallon, it's absolutely flawless. You follow their, uh, their design guide and how they recommend setting it up and it works beautifully every time. Uh, fully stainless steel, of course, all the parts are stainless steel or silicone. I've had no problems with any, you know, etching problems. They etch the inside, they also etch the outside here with their logo. Haven't had any problems with that. Um, it cleans up super well. You can just take it apart. Essentially, you just wipe everything down. I just blast it with some hot water, wipe it down, a little bit of PBW done. Um, they have built a recirculation ball that fits in this port here, which is actually the blow-off hose. Again, I told you I took that off. That's actually the elbow I used here in the clamp. Um, but they have a recirculation, you know, a clean in place sprayer ball uh, that just developed. I haven't had a chance to test that one, but that looks to be killer. Um, and uh, yeah, made in the USA, welded in the USA, I should say. Uh, they've got uh, also, I'm not sure if you can see these two ports here on the top. There's like kind of a two, two things here. I was lucky enough to also get to test their prototype immersion chiller. It's a giant stainless steel coil. It goes almost the whole length of this thing. And uh, essentially, I, the way that I use mine is I will pump very, very cold water from the refrigerator down there up through the coil and then back down to help regulate that temperature. So I've been able to actually maintain like a, oh God, it was like a 58 degree um, fermentation on this thing in the middle of summer. It's 90 some degrees out there. You can see I'm like schwitzy. It's disgusting. Um, so it's actually worked out really, really well. It was, it was Ben's actual prototype, the owner of Spike Brewing. He sent me his. He was like, I can get another one made. Try it. Let me know what you think. Um, beautiful. That thing is worth its weight in gold. So as far as I'm concerned, the Spike Conical is going to be the best conical out there. I love this huge dump valve on the bottom. I've, I've read so many concerned reviews about the Blickman one. And not to poo-poo on Blickman, obviously they really know what they're doing. But I also have a friend that has one of the Blickman 14 gallons. And it's, it's dump valve on the bottom, you know, the dump connection, is very small. And it clogs, from what I've heard, a lot. This one here... I have had no problems clogging because it's a two inch dump valve. I mean, pretty much all the sediment from a regular batch of beer for me is right in this elbow. So it's a quick, you know, I actually, the pressure is so great that I like have a large bucket that I blow it into just to catch all the spray. Cause it's, it's so, it's so the, all that concentration just blows it right out. Um, the sample valve is absolutely cool. You can sample throughout the whole thing. I spritz it with some sanitizer. We'll pull a uh, sample 
obviously you got to let the yeast flow out first so I'll rinse that out pull my sample spritz up there again with uh, some sanitizer and you're done it's super easy to pull samples from this the only thing I recommend is disconnect or pull your uh, uh, blow off hose out of your water uh, reason being obviously if you're removing material and you've got a good gasket it's going to create a vacuum so you can suck up water from that hose so something to keep in mind um, you know I don't have here I don't have actually any you can look this up on Spike's website but I was going to tell you how tall it is so here I am I'm 5'10 so from my groin area pretty much just uh, to the top of my head so it's large you know it's a large uh, fermenter um, but gets the job done 10 gallon with any conical you're not going to have there's no such thing as a small conical you're not going to be able to fit this in your dorm fridge it's just not going to work you could probably fit it in one of the like half fridges that would probably work just fine um, but yeah it's, it's it's a large fermenter so if you're going to be fermenting an ambient temperature consider that coil um, or consider some other way to cool it um, as you can see i've got my thermo well installed here i've got the temperature probe from my ranko dual stage you guys have seen that many many times um, that's actually uh, I moved that uh, fermentation chamber from in between my standard freezer and my kegerator here over here when I got this sucker because I knew that I was going to need to figure out some type of cooling s system for it because uh, we're in the basement here but it still gets really really warm and I didn't want you know any funk to happen if you know didn't didn't need to um, trying to think what else here what else here so got the top oh you can also uh, you don't need to buy the giant coil of course if you don't opt for that uh, I picked this up extra but this was the standard that comes with a big old four inch clamp top look how crazy big that thing is <laughs> hello um, but it's a four inch access up here on the top so it's absolutely huge so if you need to dry hop or anything like that open it up pop it in you're good to go um, this guy here, I have no idea how big this actually is. Most of the tri clamps on here are one and a half inch, with the exception of the main dump valve on the bottom. That's a two inch dump valve. Um, and then these butterfly valves come with it. Um, the, uh, pretty much everything comes with it, with the exception of that gigantic coil I was telling you about. That would be obviously an upgrade. But uh, yeah, it comes ready to roll. You've got the gaskets, you've got the valves, you've got the sample port, you've got all the tri clamp actual clamps. You know, it, it comes ready to roll. Um, what I did is I just cleaned it with some PBW. You know, there was obviously some manufacturing uh, uh, oil and stuff on there, so cleaned it really, really well. I did passivate mine with uh, star sand, so I filled it up to the very, very top with star sand, let it sit there for, what is it, an hour? It's like an hour with star sand in it. And, and I don't even know if that's necessary with theirs, but uh, I've read online that, you know, uh, stainless steel likes passivating. It creates a... Um, essentially a, a, a very thin oxidation layer so that way it stays uh, more impervious to rust you know it, it helps prevent any rust going on haven't had any problems with that with this so far so we're doing good there um, but yeah I can't think of anything else really to tell you so my official Joe review I give it two thumbs way up two thumbs up not because it's an awesome fermenter that they sent to me, <laughs> but because I think its quality is is next to none. I love that huge dump valve on the bottom. The only issues I had with, they fixed it in that development time, that big gasket here. It is flawless now. It's very easy to install. The other the clamp was a little tricky to install. This one is very, very easy to pop on there. Um, it's easier to center with the new gasket on there. The other ones you had to be really careful. And like, for example, that C-shaped one, when, when I put it on there, you know, you have to kind of hold it weird to kind of, because it stretches, you know, around there. I, it would, I'd get one side and then the one side would pop off. You know, it was a pain. This new one, it fits right up in there. I actually have to kind of shimmy it around. I get it uh, sanitized with star sand, so that gives it a little bit of wiggle room in there. But they pinched certain sections just a little bit to help hold that gasket in place. So that's um, very, very nice to have. Um, clamps right down, everything else goes together nicely. Um, it's a very heavy unit. Once I have liquid in this, I do not move it. Um, there's no way I could personally move it. I don't think I'd want to. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I don't know if they've got in the in the future maybe some designs considerations for larger fermenters. I know they're going to be making quite large ones, but they may have cast or something like that. I'm not sure. I don't think you need that with the 14 gallon because I mean you're probably not going to be moving it around anyway. If you've got the wherewithal to pick up one of these monsters, you know that it's going to be heavy, and you know that there's going to be a lot of. Uh, uh, what are they going to you know, operational flow considerations because once you start filling it, yeah, it's going to be sitting exactly where you filled it. Um, and that's just the 14 gallon. Um, but yeah, so I, I can't, I can't say enough good things about it. I absolutely love it. Um, I did look it up, uh, prior to this video. Uh, their price point is very, very good in my opinion for the quality of this that, that you get and the, um, uh, the the ability to you know customize i mean you, you can you can set this up with all you know this is their standard setup but you can move the clamps around of course you can change it to whatever your system needs and i'm sure if you call them they'll be able to help fabricate something nice for you if you need like something special in the side or you've got you know they are already did that on the pots for me so i can't imagine they wouldn't be able to help you do something like that too um uh and yeah yeah i mean i've had zero problems with it with the exception of that gasket that they've fixed and I've done several batches since the new gasket he sent me the new gasket and it's worked just flawlessly so yeah two thumbs way up if you'd go pick one up tell them Terpsichorean kids sent you um, and uh, yeah I'm sure he'd love to hear it and I know that they love seeing the homebrew setup so if you build you know a monster like this this is ridiculous right <laughs> um, send them pictures and stuff because I know they're gonna love it and uh, again this is not a paid promotion they have paid me in no way they have sent me this item for free um, to test it and test it we did we found problems they fixed the problems and now they're getting rolled out which I think is cool so um, yeah if you end up getting one let me know i do know they're also looking into uh finally wholesaling actually they're looking they're talking with some homebrew shops biy homebrew supply is one of them uh to do some retail so if you are looking at picking up uh any of the spike brewing products on a uh you know from biy homebrew supply send me an email go to biyhomebrewsupply.com hit the contact form that goes right to me and my wife nikki you know nikki um and we will see what we can do. They're still in the development phase of it, but I'm sure that if I'm like, hey, got, you know, Ben, I've got orders here. You want to fulfill them? I know they'll be able to get them out. That'll help support BIY. That'll support Spike Brewing. You'll get a killer ass setup. It'll be good. Um, but yeah, and I'm not joking here. Unbiased review. I think it's absolutely incredible for the value and for the quality that it is. I've been purposefully hard on it, kind of like I was with the pots. I just kind of slash it around, and I've dropped stuff on it, and and it hasn't had a single ding, not a single problem with it. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, what is it? Undulate. You know, you can't really mess with it. The, the stainless is so thick, it really doesn't move around very much. Um, it's got these handles on the side. You can hear the ding, 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 ding. That's kind of my only beef with it. I kind of like the stock pots have a gigantic handle welded on the side. You're not moving that anywhere. But these are really, really nice because you can move them around. And I actually use the one on the other side to hold my blow off hose because it comes out so far. I was like, well, if I just arc it, I put it through there, it stays in place. And so it is kind of handy to have that. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm, I'm nitpicking now really at that point. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great fermenter. Um, I like the stainless. I like that they've got the butterfly valves. They have the lever. I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, you can kind of see that one. It's got the trigger, so you have to actually compress it and move it. It's not just like one of the handles where, you know, if your cat jumps on it, it's going to dump the shit on the floor. Um, you have to actually pull it, open it up. Um, the bottom valve, obviously being a two inch uh, tri-clamp, is very, very quick to drain out. Um, this one here is inch and a half. Again, very, very quick to drain out. This one here, the sample port, is about a quarter inch, um, I believe is the actual ID of this like drop port here. Um, so it pulls a nice slow sample. It's not like you have to, you know, uh, it's very, very gentle. Um, the probe, the temperature probe here, I use a Ranko. They're a little bit smaller than the Johnson controls, but I have plenty of wiggle room with my Ranko. So it, I would imagine any standard, um, Thermal well should, or not thermal, uh, thermistor should fit in there. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I can't, 
like I said, I can't really say enough good stuff about it because it's been a delight to have. It's been awesome to use. I put uh, batches of beer through it. I did a double batch of wine. I did two wine expert kits in there. That was a crazy, I mean, it was like to the top. <laughs> and I, because I did 12 gallons in a 14 gallon fermenter. Uh, I had foam popping out the top. You know, it, it was it was madness. I really should have thought that one through, but I figured, hey, it's acidic as hell. You know, it's wine. So let's see if it can handle it. Absolutely no problems. Didn't mess with the etching, didn't cause any rust. It worked beautifully. So, and it was very easy to dump out the lees um, and the oak chips right out the bottom through that giant thing. Then I spritzed it with the sanitizer and we were good. So, uh, yeah, there's my official review. Two thumbs up. I absolutely love it. Thank you again, Ben, for sending it my way and for listening to my recommendations for the, uh, the that gasket. And because um, I've also sent some other things, but uh, yeah, thank you for listening. And I appreciate you sending it my way. It's been a delight to use, and I'm looking forward to putting more batches through it. Uh, just keep keep it rolling. You know, the standardization batch is a really fun thing I've found to do. Uh, I seem to be honestly out of time all the time now so when I brew I like to brew a lot and then kind of knock it out um, which is why you guys haven't seen me in a while but uh, but yeah I love it I can't recommend it enough I like the design differences between other stainless conicals out there on the market I think their price point is really really good um, and if again I would imagine that they can customize it to anything you need if you need it uh, just be an email to you know to Ben so um, yeah unless you're looking for something absolutely far out but then again I'm pretty sure Ben would be able to figure out how to do it <laughs> he is an engineer after all right <laughs> so so yeah well YouTube thanks for watching I'm gonna go uh, take these uh, kegs put one of them in the kegerator here and then keg up that cider I think um, we'll probably do be doing a kegging video here too, actually, because I get a lot of questions about how to keg and what pressures and, and all that stuff. So we're probably going to do a video on that here. It only makes sense, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, that being said, cheers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to this rambling video. I know I rambled on there, um, but I'm excited. I'm very excited for you to finally see. I can now shoot from a wide angle. You can actually see the whole area without me having to very strategically knock the camera off at a certain point. Um, but yeah, it's been a delight. It's been great to use. I really, really like mine. Um, uh, if we think of the stars, because I, what is it? I gave the fast from it four stars. Uh, this sucker is five out of five stars. It's, it's absolutely knockout. Um, I just, I really can't get over the quality of it and how easy it is to use. It's so easy to clean. Um, love it. So, cheers! Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. 17, guys.